Good afternoon, class. Here's exam to review chapter three, chapter three differentiation rules, which will cover from section 3.1 to 3.8. Here's sections 3.7 and 3.8, 3.7 rates of change in the natural and social sciences, 3.8 exponential growth and decay. 3.7 rates of change, the difference quotient, delta y over delta x is f of x up two minus f of x up one over x up two minus x up one. There are different ways of representing that. We are looking at two points and rise over run. This is called the average rate of change of y or f of x with respect to x over the interval of x up one to x up two and can be interpreted as the slope of a secant line. So a curve, Two points, connect them. You can calculate the slope easily. The idea is to get to the tangent line. We recognize the following limit as being the derivative f prime of x sub one. So instantaneous rate, rate of change. Limit of delta y over delta x as delta x approaches zero. Limit of f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 as x sub 2 approaches x sub 1 or delta x goes to 0. Or limit of f of x minus f of a over x minus as x approaches a if you call this x. And if you call this a, this is the case. And if you call this Z, X, and if this distance is H, call this A plus H, that is this. The derivative F prime of A is the instantaneous rate of change of Y or F of X with respect to X when x equals a. So that's very straightforward. That's our, those are the definitions that we've seen. There's really not much new. We have seen it before, so we should be comfortable with the concept. Now, so f prime of a is the limit of f of x minus f of a over x minus as x approaches a, or limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero. So these are the definitions we have seen. And average rate of change of m of pq instantaneous is m of tangent. Now, the height in inches of a sunflower x weeks after being planted can be approximated by the function f of x equals 6x six minus 1 fourth of x squared. How tall is the sunflower eight weeks after planting? As far as the units are concerned, plus anytime you do work problem, if units are given, you're given back with proper units. So how tall is it after eight? Just plug in eight. So basically six times eight, one fourth of eight squared. Forty-eight minus sixteen is thirty-two inches. Find average rate of growth from end of week six to end of week twelve. Any time you have two points in time, that means average. Good old elementary algebra. So we want delta y over delta x. They don't even have to mention average because they are giving us two points in time. So f of twelve minus f of six over twelve minus six. Just plug in twelve and then six. So six times 12 minus one fourth of 12 squared minus six times six minus one fourth of six squared. Uh, this is 72, 12 squared is 144. And one fourth of it is 36, so 72 minus 36. Uh, Uh, 
this is 36 minus one fourth of 36 or nine. And I hope you see if you apply the negative, negative 36, negative 36, cancel out the 72 plus nine over six or three halves. And the units would be the new units of the numerator over the units of the denominator. Delta Y change in Y, change in F of X is in inches, change in X, the number of weeks. So three halves of an inch per week. Find the instantaneous rate of growth 10 weeks from after planting, even if they don't mention instantaneous, one point in time, that's what it means. So basically differentiate. If a prime of X is six, minus one fourth times two or one half X, and now plug in the 10. When we plug in 10, half of that is five, six minus that is a one, same units, because F prime is dy dx in essence, okay? And one inch per week, which means what? Explain the meaning of your answer. On week 10 or after week 10, the sunflower is growing at the rate of one inch per week. Given C of X equals 62X squared plus 27,500 and R of X is X cubed minus 12X squared plus 40X plus 10. This is called the cost function. This is called the revenue function. Find the total profit. Remember, profit by definition is simply revenue minus cost. So this is elementary algebra. Subtract the cost from the revenue. So this is minus 62x squared. This is minus 27,500. And so these two combine. These two combine. And we get x cubed minus 74x squared plus 4dx minus 27,490. Total cost, revenue, and profit from the production and sale of 50 units. Meaning, for the cost, C of 50. For the revenue, uh, R of 50. Uh, for the profit, P of 50. Plug in. That's all. Again, elementary algebra. C of 50. Plug in 50 into C of X. 62 times 50 squared plus 27,500 is 182,500. R of 50, 50 cubed minus 12 times 50 squared plus 40 times 50 plus 10. And you do the math, you end up with 97,000. $10. So how do you find the profit function? Uh, two ways, and I'm going to show you quickly both ways. One way is the hard way. Plug in 50 here. So you get P of 50 is 50 cubed minus 74 times 50 squared plus 40 times 50 minus 27,490. And you do the math, you plug in, and you get negative 85,490. That means you're losing money. What is the easiest way? Well, if P is R minus C, so P of 50 is R of 50 minus C of 50. So subtract this from 97,010, and that would be a faster way to come up with the Answer okay. I just wanted to show you. You can do it, of course, this way. Makes no sense. This is the easier way to do it. Okay. So I hope everybody is okay with that. Now, before we move on to the next page and do some uh, calculus, I just want to remind you that um, profit is R minus C, and when profit is zero or or R is equal to C, that is called the break-even point break-even point.
the marginal cost, revenue, and profit when 50 units are produced and sold. Never mind the 51st. The concept of a marginal in uh, business means differentiation. So never mind the 50 units. First, let's discuss differentiation. So C prime of X is 124X. That's the meaning of margin. R prime of X. And of course, at 50, you plug in 50. 124 times 50. 6,200. Now, they do have a meaning. We'll discuss it in a moment. But for now, R prime of X. 3X squared minus 24X plus 40. And plug in 50, you get R prime of 50. So 3 times 50 is good, minus 24 times 50 plus 40. And you do the math and you end up with $6,340. P prime of X, 3X squared minus 100. 48x plus 40, and at 50 units, plug in 50, uh, 3 times 50 squared minus 148 times 50 plus 40, and it ends up being $140. We could have said for this P prime of X is R prime of X minus C prime of X. And P prime of 50 is R prime of 50 minus C prime of 50. Notice their difference is 140. Again, one more time. We could have said P prime is R prime minus C prime. So subtract 124 from here. If you do, you get minus 148X. And subtract this one from here, you get P prime of 50. That's another way of doing that. Now, what is the significance of those numbers? So when 50 units have been made, okay, what happens? The approximate cost of the 51st unit, the next one, will be 6,200. That means C prime of 50, C prime of 50 represents the marginal cost. And that means almost the cost of making the next unit. If you want the exact answer, you have to find C of 50 first. That means plug in C of 51 minus C of 50. If you do that, that means go to the cost function. Plug in 51 gives you some number. Plug in 52 gives you some other number. Their difference is not going to be this number, but it's going to be very close. I can't emphasize this enough. Again, this is not the answer, but it's very close. That's the idea, everybody. Okay. So, C of 51 minus C of 50 is 62 times 51 squared plus 27,500. This one is 50 and you do it. Look at this number. I've done it for you. 
the numbers are almost identical. What's the difference? This is a lot easier to calculate, everybody. This is a lot easier to calculate. So you're saying either way will be acceptable, whether we list it? No, no, no. If they ask you for the marginal cost, you ha and they ask you, you have to use this number. If they ask the exact answer, you do elementary algebra. But the oh. point of this question is that the what is the meaning of a marginal cost? The marginal cost gives you the approximate cost of the next unit. So, for example. If we have C of 100, that means C prime of 100. C prime of 100, that means the cost of making 100 first unit is almost that much. Okay, I see. Okay, everybody. So the approximate revenue from the sale of the 51st unit will be 6340 for an approximate profit on the 51st unit of 140. Those are all approximations, everybody. So very uh, straightforward. All right, let's move on again. Those are some applications that are worth knowing everybody. The distance in meters of an object from a starting point is given by S of t equals 2t squared minus 5t plus 4d, where t is, in, is time in seconds. What is the velocity of the object from two to four seconds? This is the average velocity because two points in time is given. And basically, remember, the total distance over total time is the answer. So in this case, S of 4 minus S of 2 over 4 minus 2 is the answer. So you plug in 4, 2 times 4 is squared, minus 5 times 4, plus 40, minus, now you plug in 2. 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 40. And this simplifies to 52. This simplifies to 38. Their difference is 14 divided by 2, 7 meters per second. What is... The instantaneous velocity and acceleration of the object. What is the velocity and acceleration after six seconds? As far as uh, instantaneous velocity, for example, goes, because one point in time is given, it is uh, the instantaneous. You don't have to mention it. So in that case, we have instantaneous. We use the formula and the definition. But now we are going to go with the easy way out because we have the formula or power rule. So S prime of T is V of T, which makes it 4T minus five. After six seconds, so plug, plug in four times six minus five is 19 meters per second. What about acceleration? Acceleration by definition is the second derivative of the position function. In other words, a of t equals v prime of t equals s double prime of t. So if I differentiate this again, the result will be the acceleration function a of t, which is four. Now, because four, I'm gonna discuss the unit in a moment. Because four is a constant, 
So acceleration after five seconds, four seconds, six seconds makes no difference. It's a constant. They're all the same. How do we get two meters per square second? V of T is dS dT, change in distance over change in time, results in meters per second. A of T is dV dT, velocity as the unit of meters per second, T as the unit of seconds, and this means meters per square second. When does the object reach a velocity of 31 meters per second? So basically the velocity function set it equal to 31. Move the negative five, make it positive. 36 divided by four, t equals nine seconds. So those are some applications in section 3.7 and now 3.8 exponential growth and decay. A quantity Q equals Q of T or Y equals Y of T is said to have an exponential growth or decay model if it increases or decreases at a rate that is proportional to the amount of the quantity present, meaning dy dt is K times Y then y is equal to some sort of a constant e to the power of kt, where that constant is also called y of zero, because if you re replace the t with zero, this becomes one, and this is y of zero. So we can write it in this format, or y of zero e to the power of kt. In some instances, they just, they have it here, they call it y sub zero y of zero becomes y sub zero when you plug in y of zero, that means plug in t equal to zero. There are different ways of writing it, depends on the text and the topic. They can say a equals p e to the power of rt. They can say y equals y sub zero e to the power of rt, or sometimes kt. y equals c e to the power of kt, q of t is q sub zero e to the power of kt. Please understand they're all the same, they're just, choosing different variables. And so in all cases, C is the initial value. K or R is the constant of proportionality known as relative growth rate. And dP dt equals K times Y, dy dt is K times Y, dP dt is K times P. Okay, depends on how you <clears throat> put it. And by the way, sometimes they even have a different, I'll, I'll show you a different formula in a moment. Rate of growth is dp dt or dy dt. So growth rate, that means differentiation. Relative growth rate, that means r or k. This is also another formula that you've seen. Sometimes they use, instead of this, take a look. They use p equals p sub zero e to the power of rt, which means if you write it in this format, p is the amount and p sub, p sub zero is the initial amount. Again, various formulas you are exposed to and that's what we want. I wanna make sure that um, it makes a perfect sense. These are different ways of writing them. So they're all the same as I mentioned. And now, this equation or equation one is sometimes called the law of natural growth, if K is positive, or the law of natural decay, if K is negative. 
It is called a differential equation because it involves an unknown function y and its derivative dy dt. Exponential growth dy dt is ky, exponential dk dy dt is negative ky. So notice y equals c e to the power of kt if we stick with that formula, if we stick with that formula. What is dy dt? Let's differentiate. dy dt or y prime is c e to the power of kt itself and times k, you can say by the chain rule, for example. So one more time. Y is C to the power of KT, C remains, E to the power of KT, the derivative is always itself. And because this is not T, it's a function of T times Q. And so what you're looking at, this is Y. So y times k or ky. In, in essence, in essence, we are going to the reverse process by differentiating the function c e to the power of kt. We are proving that dy dt equals ky has this solution. Now, dt dt this is capital t the temperature this is lowercase t the time is k t minus t sub s please understand this in essence means t of t capital t temperature as a function of time whereas this one is some sort of a constant known as the surrounding temperature this follows Newton's law of cooling, and it gives rise to the solution of t of t equals y sub 0, e to the power of kt plus t sub s, and y sub 0 is t sub 0 minus t sub s. We will discuss that uh, in a moment by looking at some examples and so forth. So this is the synopsis of the section of sugar. A population of bacteria grows from 1,000 to 4,000 in three hours. Assume exponential growth. That means assume this. And again, various ways of writing. Find the population in six hours. So first, you're dealing with the word problem. Get to the habit of writing the given, which means first we are going to go with the formula. Okay, why is that? C e to the power of kt. So we're going to go from 1,000 to 4,000. We're going to assume this is the initial value. So c is 1,000. Or y of 0 is 1,000, which becomes y sub 0, anything you want to call it. And what does that mean, 1,000 to 4,000 in three hours? That means y of a t. Remember, when we say y is y of t, y of three, number three is 4,000. So over the course of three hours, it becomes 4,000. So if you want to change this, if it makes it easier for you to see that this is really y as a function of t, okay? And therefore, you're changing the t to a number that they gave you here. And that's fine. Now we want to find the population in six hours. So to do so, we need to go through the process of finding this formula, which means, which means in this formula, we need to find C, it's given. Now we're going to go through this process and we find K. So find K and then Y of T and then Y of six. That's the concept, everybody.
All right, so we know that C is 1000, so we are going to replace it here. And we are going to write Y of T is 1000 into part K. If you don't write the T here, it's not a big deal, but really write it here just to understand what's going on. Because we are going to use Y of three equals 4,000. That means Y of three is 1000 e to the power of K times T, which is three. That's the meaning of it. And so we're gonna solve for K. Divide by four, divide by 1000 and you get four equals e to the power of three times k. So I wanna, this is what you get. And I wanna show you the next step. In order to solve a logarithmic equation, a exponential equation, you have to take a natural log of both sides. Well, you take a log, which log? Because this space is e natural log. So this is ln four, this becomes three k. Recall ln of e to the power of x is x. That's why I hope everybody remembers that. So what is k? ln 4 divided by 3. This is an exact answer. Now, this has only four decimals. You really want to keep it as exact and you want to take it with many, 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 many decimals, okay? But let's say we stopped at four and all we have to do now, plug in number six. Put it into a calculator, everybody. Evaluate it. And because we are looking at population of bacteria, we are going to round it to the nearest whole number, okay? So zero, since next to it is one, that just remains. But if this number was, let's say, five or larger, we would change this to one. So about 16,000. When will the population reach 30,000? Well, you have this formula, everybody. Replace the left side with 30,000. Okay. Y of T missing equals 30K. So 30,000 is 1,000 e to the power 0. 0.4621 T. We can even use ln 4 over 3 precisely as we found it. And it will, uh, you know, give you a better approximation later on. So obviously I can drop the 1,000 and this changes to 30 because I'm dividing by 1,000, right? And now... If I take the natural log, the reason I'm going to take the natural log again, because this is E, okay? Otherwise, it makes no difference. And so the left side is ln 30. The right side becomes its exponent, 0 0.4621T. Uh, let me clean up. And so T, you have to divide by its coefficient, which is this number, 0. 0.4621. It's the precise answer. You put it into a calculator and with a bunch of decimals, you get a little bit more than seven, 7.3603. And what are the units? Hours. So whatever units that they give us, okay. So again, it's uh, pretty straightforward, everybody.
hope everybody's okay with that. Does it matter how many decimals you take it out to? Normally, they will ask you, but always, uh, if they don't, always carry uh, many more to be on the safe side. Okay. For a case okay. like that, the reason the number of decimals may not be as important because the formula that is achieved here is an approximation itself. So that's why it's not normally they, they go with a couple of decimals. But remember, when you do the rounding, you do the rounding at the end. Okay. The intermediate steps, you don't do the rounding, you keep as exact as you can. Exponential decay model. Uh, physicists express the rate of decay in terms of half-life. The time required for half of any given quantity to decay. So a sample contains one gram of radium. How much radium will remain after 1,000 years? Uh, use a half-life of 1620. So M of T equals M sub zero e to the power of KT. Normally they use M to represent mass in uh, texts that they deal with this type uh, science courses. Uh, going back to this one, the concept of a half-life, if we go through that, H becomes minus ln two over K. And if you, this is, if you keep it positive, if you have it in this format with a negative sign, then this becomes ln2 over k, okay? I want you to be very careful with that. So having said that, let's see what we are going to do. We are going to use either this one or this one and y of zero. So a sample contains one gram. So the initial value m sub zero or c is just one gram. And then half life H, no, they may use a capital H to represent the half life, everybody, is given as 16 Tony. And we want to know what is Y of 1000. So again, understanding the question. So here's the formula we're going to use, or this one. The initial value Y of zero is just one gram, okay. And then half-life is this, and we want y of 1,000. So that's pretty straightforward as to what the process is asking us to do. Again, as long as we write the given, it makes a huge difference, everybody. I highly recommend you do that anytime you're dealing with a word problem. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult to see what you're doing. Okay. And so... With that being the case, we are ready to move on. So half-life. Um, we need to find y of t, and we can use the fact that h is ln2 over k, or k is ln2 over h. But let me quickly show you how that works. So going with this, if we want a half-life, the initial value is C. We're not going to even change it to 1, but in general. So half of C is the left side, and the right side is C e to the power of K times T. Now, of course, T is 16 Tony, or uh, because half-life is 16 Tony. That's one. I want to make sure we understand we are saying half life is 16 Tony. That's why we are using one half and this number, okay? Now we can get rid of the C from both sides. What is left, we take a natural log. Anytime you have an exponential and you want to get to the exponent, you take a log because the base is E here, you take a natural log. And the left side is ln of one half. The right side is 1620 K. And all you have to do, divide the left side by 1620, which means this. 
And so K becomes ln of one half over 1620 or negative ln two. Please understand that ln of one half is ln one minus ln two. And we should know ln one is zero. So minus ln two, that's actually how we arrive at this one. Okay, let me just actually different color here. So K is minus ln two over 1620. So I want to look at this formula. H, everybody, H is minus ln two. So take a look at this one. Minus ln two over K. Therefore, K is minus ln two over H. Please understand what's happening here. We can look at this formula and interchange this. Either H is minus ln two over K, and that means half-life, or K, if you do the cross product, you see that, or K is minus ln two uh, over H, okay? Very straightforward, everybody. All right, so now the formula, and again, if you want to go with the approximation bunch of decimals, you can keep it as exact. If you go with that, okay. Now notice, going back to the formula, okay, C is one, so I didn't write that everybody, but let's say we put the one here, okay, that's C. Then E to the power of K, this number times T. So that is the formula. We found the general formula. What happens in a thousand years? Replace the T with 1000. And you just use a calculator. 1000, three zeros cancels out three decimals. And it gives you 0.652 grams, meaning Something that has a half-life of 1620, if it has one gram after a thousand, of course, it will be a little bit more than half. 0.652 grams is left. I hope everybody is following how we uh, arrived at it. Again, it's pretty straightforward. The growth in world population in millions is estimated by the formula P of T is 3100 e to And notice it says it's estimated, it's not exact. Where T is the number of years since 1960, find the instantaneous rate of change or growth rate for the year 2015. As always, include units. So we want P prime of T. And P prime of T, 3100, times the same thing, because an exponential, the same thing, e to the power of 0 0.01660. And if this were T, we would be done. It's not by the chain rule, the derivative of the exponent, which is 0 0.0166, so times that. And so if we multiply these two numbers and put it in front, we end up with 51.46, the product of these two numbers. 51.46, and this is unchanged, e to the power of 0 0.01660. So that's P prime of T in general. However, <clears throat> we want that for this year. So if you assume 1960 represents the year, the initial value, okay, the year we begin, then their difference is the number of years past. That is the T value. The difference between the two, which is 55, is the T value. So into this formula, replace the T equals 55 for the year, 2015. Now, I'm going to multiply these two numbers, raise 8 it up to that power, multiplied by 
51.46. It gives you this much, 128.2273. Let's see what that means again. Going back to this, millions. And going back to this, I want to make sure we understand what unit we are. P prime of T means DP DT, meaning, meaning change in population in millions, so millions, over change in time per unit of time per year. So million people per year. So 128.2273 means, okay, you could also use that one, C e to the power of kt, dy dt is ky, dp dt is ky, kp, k is 0 0.0166. Um, those are the formulas, okay, various formulas, and I used the chain rule here. Now, p prime of 55 is k times P of 55, which makes it the K, this number 0 0.0166 times this one, and it gives you the same answer. Uh, either way is fine, but here's the meaning of it. In 2015, the world population was increasing at the rate of this much, now this much is 128 million, 227, 300 people per year. Please notice how I change this to that. Basically, I move the decimal to the right by six zeros, by six places, because a million has six zeros. Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling states that the rate of cooling of an object is proportional to the temperature difference between the object and its surroundings, provided that this difference is not too large. This law also applies to warming, meaning if you bring a cup of coffee to a room, as you all know, it starts cooling down. And eventually, as time goes by, it takes the same temperature as the room temperature. On the other hand, if you bring a cold, ice cold soda to a room temperature, gradually it warms up to the room temperature. That's the idea. Of course, if the difference is huge, it, it follows it narrowly, not as uh, precisely. So if we let Capital T of T, please notice capital T represents the temperature. Be the temperature of the object at time T, lowercase t. And T sub S be the temperature of the surrounding. Then we can formulate Newton's law of cooling as a differential equation. D capital T dT, I know it looks dT dT. It sounds terrible, but that's what we are dealing with, dt dt. Is k times the parenthesis t minus t sub s. Please understand this t is t sub t of t, okay? t of t. And t sub s is the surrounding temperature, t is a constant. For example, if we bring a cup of coffee to the room, the room temperature would be the surrounding temperature, okay? So, We are going to write this, and again, please understand this, this, this. That's what we mean. Maybe we should write it as T of T. Now, we are going to represent this with Y, T minus T sub S. That means T of T minus T sub S is Y of T. That's the meaning of it, everybody. Uh, 
uh, again we don't want it to get crazy that's why we put capital t here but t of t here to make sure we understand this is a function of time t now let's differentiate both sides If I differentiate this, I get y prime of t. If I differentiate this, I get t prime of t. If I differentiate this, I get zero because it's a number. So y prime of t or dy dt is the same as t prime of t or dt dt. Yeah, I know this sounds terrible, but So according to this, dt dt, this one, which is the same as dy dt is ky. Please understand, put these two together and see that means ky. Therefore, if dy dt is ky, y is c e to the power of kt or y of 0 e to the power of kt or simply y sub 0 e to the power of kt. So this is y of t. Now we go here, everybody. We go over here. And we say y of t is t of t minus t sub s and it's equal to y sub zero e to the power of kt. So what is t of t? Move this one. Okay, understand those two are the same. And this is what you get. Now, this is in essence, I'm going over the proof. You're not responsible for it. If you can follow it, you're in good shape as far as calculus as, uh, as well as algebra is concerned. Now, if I replace the lower case d, namely the time with zero. So this becomes t of zero. This becomes y sub zero e to the power of k times zero, which is zero, plus t sub s. And if you look at this one, I hope you realize this is one. So you have a y sub zero plus t sub s. So what is y sub zero move t sub s? y sub zero is t sub zero minus t sub s. We wanted to prove that. Therefore, as far as you're concerned, the Newton's law of cooling, capital T of t equals this formula, y sub zero e to the power of kt plus t sub s, where y sub zero is t of zero minus t sub s, the uh, initial temperature minus the um, surrounding temperature. So that was explanation as to how we get all of this. I highly recommend you go over that a couple of times to really get that. That is really a wonderful subject. But let's look at an example. A 180 degree uh, turkey is removed from the oven and placed in a 74 degrees Fahrenheit room. After 15 minutes, it has cooled to 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Find the general solution or T. So we have this formula. Okay, everybody. T of T equals Y sub zero e to the power of KT plus T sub S. We know Y sub zero is T sub zero minus T sub S. So first let's write the given 180 degrees Turkey. That means T sub zero is that. We bring it to the room. That means T sub S, the surrounding temperature is that. After 15 minutes, it cools down to 136 degrees. That means capital T of 15, capital T of 15 is 136. So again, the translation of the given, this is T at time zero or T of zero, which becomes T sub zero. This is the surrounding temperature because we are bringing it to the room. This says, it takes 15 minutes and goes from 180 to 136. So T of 15 is 136. We use this information 
to find t of t. So first and foremost, y sub zero is the difference between these two. So 180 minus 74 is the difference between these two. And it's 106 degrees. So into this formula, okay, goes y sub zero, we already have it. Into this formula goes t sub s, we already have it. So look at this formula. We found y sub zero, we are in good shape. And t sub s was given, right? The room was at 74 degrees. Now, if this is T of T, that means if I replace it with 15, so I replace the T with 15, I should get 136 and I can get to 36. K and therefore the formula that I need. So T of T is 106 e to the power of KT plus 74. And that means T of 15 is 106 e to the power of K times 15 plus 74 equals 136. I hope everybody is clear as to what's going on. So abtract 74, we get 62. Divide by 106. And class, I don't want to, I you know we can uh, simplify this. I don't want to simplify it on purpose, okay? Because I want you to see where the numbers come from. Because the base is E, here, we're going to take a natural log of both sides because we want to find k. So ln of the left is equal to ln of the right. ln of the left is 15k. And ln of the right, again, we're going to keep it just the way it is. Again, I'm not even simplifying that. Therefore, k is the right side divided by number 15, and that's the exact answer. Now you put it into a calculator and it becomes negative 0 0.03575. The reason it becomes negative because this number is less than one, ln of a number between zero and one is negative. And so T of a T, everybody, T of T, we got everything, including the K, and we say T of T is 106 e to the power of this number, negative 0 0.03575 T plus 74. How long does it take for the turkey to cool to 110 degrees? Now, in other words, if this is 110, find T. We have the general formula. We are in good shape. We are going to replace the left side with 110 and solve for the missing t. To do so, we are going to get rid of 74. So we are going to subtract 74 from both sides and we get 36 on the right side. We are going to uh, divide both sides by 106 and we get e to the power of negative 0 0.035754 t is equal to 36 over 106 again i can simplify i can simplify this i don't do it on purpose just i want to keep the numbers intact so you can go back and forth if I take the natural log of both sides, the left side becomes the exponent only. And the right side 
is the natural log. If I divide by this number, T equals ln of 36 over 106, this divided by this number. This is negative because this number is less than one. Natural log of that number is uh, negative. Negative over negative makes it positive. And it's 30.2 and it's about 30 minutes. And it's got applications. Put on your detective caps, CSI. They use this stuff. A dead body was found at 1.30 a.m. when the temperature was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And the body temperature was 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Reminding you that normal body temperature, the assumption is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Nowadays, they have found it to be slightly different. One hour later, so this is what they do when they find it, then they wait some time, for example, one hour later, and they uh, you know, measure the temperature again, and this time was 85 degrees. Now, of the three suspects, Goblin had an alibi for 10 p.m. and after. Mickey Mouse had an alibi between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. SpongeBob had an alibi until 12 p.m. Who has a good alibi? So first and foremost, let's see what's given. At 1.30 uh, a.m., we are assuming T equals zero the surrounding temperature is 55 degrees. T sub S, the temperature was 55 degrees. At 1.30 a.m., T equals zero, okay? The body temperature was 87 degrees. And T of one hour or 60 minutes, maybe easier to go with the minutes is 85 degrees. So pay attention to what I wrote here one more time. We are going to assume this is the initial time, therefore t equal to zero at 1.30 a.m. And this is important to understand that. At 1.30, we take a t to be zero. The surrounding temperature is 55 degrees. The body temperature is 87 degrees. That's why t sub zero or t of zero. This is this one. And 60 minutes later, one hour later, if you want to go with the hours, you can. It's a tad easier to go with the minutes. 60 minutes, TF60 is equal to 85. So what do we need to do? Okay. Let's find T of what time, at what point is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the idea, everybody. T of what time? Okay. All right. So we go with the formula here that we have. And we plug in what we have. So we have T of 0, 87. T of is 55. So their difference we need as y sub 0. So 87 minus 55 is 32. Okay, so I got y, so I got this number, 32. And then T sub S is 55. So I'm gonna write the formula as T of T is 32, right? E to the power of KT plus 55. So we have this. What is missing is K. So how do you find the K? This is the reason they measure the temperature sometime later, 60 minutes. You can do it in two hours, whatever. And now this will help us find the K. So T of 60, that means 32 e to the power of K times 60 plus 55 is 85. So again, 
the purpose of this is to find the value of k because those are easy to find y sub zero, t sub zero, t sub s. And so of course, we are going to subtract 55. And the right side becomes 30. We are going to divide by 32. Again, 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 on purpose. I'm not simplifying this because I want you to see where the numbers are coming. Everybody knows this is 15 over 60. Because the base is E, we're going to take a natural log of both sides. And this becomes the exponent 60K. And this is ln of 30 over 32. Divide this by 60. And that gives you the K. ln of 30 over 32 divided by 60. And... We end up with negative 0.001075. Why is this negative? This number is less than one. Negative over positive makes it negative. And so we have the formula replace the K. Therefore, T of T is 32 e to the power of K that we found here plus 55. So that's the formula. At what point in time it should be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Let's set this equal to 98.6 to find the T. So T of T is equal to 98.6 degrees following this formula. Subtract 55. So we get 32 e to the power of e to the power of negative 0 0.00175 t equals 43.6 because when we subtract 55 from 98.6, we get that. Divide by 32. Divide both sides by 32. Take a natural log of the left side and the right side. The left side, we just get the exponent. The right side doesn't change. T is the right side divided by this number, everybody. T is ln of 43.6 over 32 over this number, minus 0 0.001075. Uh, the numerator is ln of, this number is larger than one is positive. The denominator is negative, so we get minus 287.7, about minus 288 minutes. That means from the time zero at 1.30 a.m., if you subtract minus, if you subtract 288 minutes, that's when the body was at 98.6 degrees and therefore alive. So 1.30 a.m., minus 288 minutes gives us 842. By the way, it's four hours and 48 minutes, okay? Because four times 60 is 240. So 842 p.m. And by the way, uh, plus 300 minutes, about five hours, okay? So it's, if you subtract five hours from uh, one thirty, you get 8.30. So that's easy to do, okay?
So what's happening? If you go back and read this, Goblin is the only one that has an alibi for 10 p.m. and after, but not for B4 and 8.42 p.m. is B4. So ESI, put on your detective caps, you can make it work. We found Who did the murder? 